Good morning, my name is Jacob Folger. I'm an artist and a sculptor, and today I'm going to show you how to smooth polymer clay. And it's really a whole bunch of things that you can do. I was working on this piece here this morning. This is a new piece that is still uncooked. It is a mermaid with wings, sleeping. It can be a wall piece or a table piece, and uh, I'm get, getting close now, and I thought, you know what, I'll go ahead and do this video so people can see um, how, I, how I smooth clay, how I smooth polymer clay. Um, so, we'll, we'll just start going down the list here. Um, first, um, while you're sculpting a piece, this is a dog I did. A dog's face I did um, for a video to show, you know, to demonstrate how, how my videos work. Um, and so while you're working on a piece, it's actually a good idea that when you're sculpting that you take uh, breaks from your work. Um, and you can actually gain uh, a fresh perspective just by taking little breaks, whether you walk away entirely or work on something else. And uh, you can make uh, the final smoothing of your clay go a lot easier if you do some work while you're actually sculpting the piece. And one of those things, a couple of these things you can do is you can pat. So let's say there's, um, let's take the ear for example, has some uh, blemishes on it. You can take your you can take your thumb and you can pat like this. You can pat the sculpture and actually get get rid of a lot of those little uh, blemishes. You also can do something called a short blend, um, which is basically taking your thumb and sliding it in a short uh, kind of uh, slide like that to blend out imperfections in the clay. And this could be done while during a break time. So you stop for a minute, you, let's say you're working on the eyes and you want to take a break. So instead of, you know, putting the sculpture down and stopping entirely, you could do uh, these little smoothing exercises that will help you down the road when you actually get ready to finish your sculpture. So that's a short blend, and then a long blend is basically a longer version of that, where you're just sliding your thumb along the surface of the sculpture to blend out or erase uh, imperfections. So you can do that. And these are things that you can do while you're actually working on the sculpture. And uh, another thing you can do is this sculpture is these two little frogs sitting on a log and one of them stealing a kiss from the other one there. It's a very cute sculpture. It's actually not baked yet. Part of the reason why is because I want to mold it because it's a very cute piece and I think it'll be popular. So, but the mold is going to be kind of complicated because it's got this hole going in the middle and just different things, there's different reasons. And so I'm kind of like waiting to decide what I'm going to do with it. Um, but I went ahead and finished it so I could see what it would look like. And that's something you can do with polymer clay that you really can't do with other clays very easily. Um, so, you know... It's pretty much done, but there's a lot of blemishes that I didn't, you know, get out, and I haven't smoothed it entirely yet. Um, but mostly I just wanted to have a look at it to see, you know, basically what I'm going to do, kind of get a feel for it. And even though it's got a finish on it, I could go back and work on this piece, and, you know, it wouldn't be a problem. That's the, one of the beauties of beautiful things about polymer clay. So I could go back and work on this piece, I could smooth it, you know, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a problem uh, to do that. So finishing, again, is another thing that you can do to get, uh, you know, a different perspective. The finished, completed perspective before you actually finish it and bake it. Um, so that's something that you can do. And... Um, 
Let's talk about the plane of the sculpture for a moment. Here's a sculpture. This is a minimalist cat that I did. It's still unbaked. I did some of the finish on it. Here's a little bit of bronze on his face to give me an idea of, you know, how he looks and all that sort of thing. So, because I'm still designing the piece. Um, and there's a plane. Basically, the plane is the, the you know, the surface... Um, what is what's the shape of the surface that's that's the plane and you can improve the plane by doing a number of things um you can see if you look closely at this you can see the plane is kind of up and down it's not you know this piece is not completed so you know that's not important to me at this moment but for this for this class it is um, so what you can do is you can improve the plane, get the plane ready, um, and by using uh, a tool like this ball tool, I don't use these tools very much, but I, I do use them for smoothing because it's helpful. What I can do is I can, I can rub this over the surface of the sculpture to get the plane um, that I want, so it's, and uh, and it's important to remember that whenever you're looking at a sculpture and you're doing the finishing and the final smoothing and all that, is to look at it from every uh, possible uh, direction. So if I'm looking at it from this direction, I can see there's a lump right there. And I can uh, take it out, or take it out probably take it out by run, running the tool over it. This is the plane that I'm talking about. What that does, though, is it leaves a texture in the surface. And for the piece like this, which is a minimalist design, basically, it's a style called minimalist. It's not going to have eyes. It's not going to have feet, and it's going to be very smooth and simple minimalist. Um, I want it to be pristinely smooth, so I don't want texture in it. And uh, and so uh, I'm going to then have to go back and smooth out the, uh, the plane with, uh, get, by getting rid of the detail. So, um, so let's move along here. We're talking about a bunch of different things here because it's important that you know about the different options and that sort of thing. This is a little gargoyle. Um, he's very cute, I think. And uh, I probably will want to make a mold of him. It's kind of complicated. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I put my little bronze finish on him to see how he would look. Um, he's a gargoyle, so I kind of want a stony texture. Okay. I want him to be smooth and finished looking, but I want him to have a stony texture. So um, I am not going to smooth him pristinely, beautifully smooth like I would like for maybe my cat or maybe my mermaid. Um, but I, I want some texture. So, um, you know, there's a number of ways of putting texture in. You can stipple uh, the surface with a tool. Um, you can simply leave the, the uh, texture in after you sculpt it and not remove it, which I frequently do. And you'll hear me mention on my videos, I'll say, I like to leave it in because my finishes are antique kind of looks and I just think they look better on, you know, texture. Um, so that's an option too. Um, so it depends on the, the piece. Um, and what you're doing um, so just keep that in mind but once you've got the texture in you you most definitely want to do uh, the the fine detail work and you want to get into all the cracks and make sure everything's um, you know just put together really well and um, and so keeping that in mind and this piece has a lot of tight detail it's a small piece you know, you got the cracks in between the toes and around the fingers and, and you know, back in be behind the tail. 
So, you wouldn't just have one paintbrush to work with smoothing. You would have a number of paintbrushes. You'd have one like this for the wing. You would have one like this for some of the smaller detail, smaller brush. You might have even much smaller for in between the fingers and back in there. And then you might have another brush that is small but very soft because if it's a soft brush, it's not going to leave brush marks like a brush like this that has a, a harder bristle, bristle. You know, you can pick up a package of brushes like this, you know, very inexpensively at a craft store, art store, or something like that. So just keep that in mind. Okay, let's set him down now and let's get to doing some smoothing. We're going to be using uh, alcohol and... Uh, you can use 90% uh, or you can use and or you can cut it and make it 70% um, there's not I mean you don't have to like you know cut it with the exact amount of water I mean it's not going to matter a whole lot if it's if, if you take it right out of the bottle it's going to be uh, be far more aggressive than if you cut it with some water um, and uh, you can take your you can take your brush, dip it into this into the alcohol, and then uh, and then it'd be a good idea to um, you know have a cloth or something like that and just dab off the excess. You don't really need to put all that alcohol on it. Um, you just want your brush to be wet, and then you can just uh, take your time and smooth it. And just take your time and go around and smooth it. Now keeping in mind that you want to be able to look at it from every potential angle there is because you want to get every, uh, at least for the areas that, you know, that you're trying to smooth, you want to be able to get every bit. Uh, oftentimes the edges, these edges down in here, along the arms, um, those places like that um, are going to have, uh, you know, blemishes and uh, imperfections in there and it, it's going to be a good idea to pay attention to that. And uh, you can brush and you would brush with a harder bristle brush like this um, to start off with and then move to a, uh, to a softer uh, bristle. This is a very soft. See the difference? Look how I, I move my finger over this. It's m more resistant and this one here it's not. It's like really really soft. So you can probably open up the packages and play with them with brushes a little bit at the art stores. Um, they're usually pretty nice there. They, they let you do that because they know how artists are. So, and then you can just uh, just take your time and go and brush it. So first you would use a harder bristle, and then you would graduate to the softer, which will take out any brush marks. And let's talk about also, let's talk about sculpting by smoothing. Okay, using this as an example. I don't know if mermaids have belly buttons, but I want my mermaid to have a belly button, so I put a belly button in. It's right there. Um, what you can do is you you can use your brush and your alcohol to uh, smooth that belly button out and make it really, you know, smooth and, and nice. And I don't want it to just be a jagged hole. I want it to be, you know, this is a female figure. I want it to be nice, okay? So, you can take your brush and you can dip it into the alcohol and you can do this on any part of the surface, but you can, I'm just talking about using the brush for sculpting purposes right now. You can take your brush and, and set it into the uh, belly button here and park it. Just park it and then, you know, maybe move it around a little bit, very, a little bit like this. 
and that will give it that will give the alcohol a chance to soften the clay a little bit and then you can actually spend a little bit of time on that and make it you know really just soft and smooth and nice by doing that and that's actually using the brush to sculpt it's uh it's a nice way to actually make uh you know certain things that need to be really soft and nice uh and smooth and and uh beautiful um it's something that you're not going to be able to achieve very easily with your fingers or a sculpting tool now i'd like to say also a lot of the people that watch my videos are people that are new to sculpting okay you're just starting out um i'd like you to uh, consider um taking the time to make your sculptures look as beautiful as they can um because you know why not you should and uh i know a lot of people are impatient they just want to finish up and they got something else they gotta do and um at this point maybe it's not you know like as important as it might be to other people that have been doing it for many years or whatever um, but let me tell you, it's really a, uh, a good thing if you take the time to make beautiful sculptures, um, take the additional time to smooth your pieces and, and uh, use uh, these things that I'm showing you here to make really nice, uh, nice pieces. Uh, get yourself a cup of tea, sit back, and, uh, and take your time, take breaks. Um, polymer clay doesn't dry out anytime soon so you can lay it down and just go do something else and come back to it um, it doesn't have to be an all-day job and uh, if you use these techniques that I'm showing you um, it's going to go a lot faster and work a lot better so that's basically it uh, if you like this kind of content uh, please um, subscribe to my channel and uh, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll try to get to you. And please uh, rate the video. Uh, it, it is definitely helpful and I appreciate it if you rate the video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support and have a great day.